Hi everybody, Chris here. Today we're going to talk about working with Git and your SAS projects. What is Git? Git is a distributed version control system that is the backbone for all the popular version control systems in the world, like GitHub, like GitLab, like Bitbucket. Chances are, if you work in an organization that values code as important assets, you probably are being asked to participate in sharing your code and collaborating in something that is supported by Git. Good news, SAS also integrates with Git, and today we're gonna to talk about how to get started doing that. The benefits of working with Git and SAS, well, I mean, version control, right? You make changes to your code, you sometimes regret those changes, or you need to go back and look and see what changed where something got broken, and you want to be able to revert or also just track changes that your colleagues have made that might affect the way your thing is working. So version control, that's sort of the baseline. But it's more than that. It's also the collaboration, the workflow, being able to track permissions and, and how changes get made, the overall developer operations associated with maintaining important code. Git supports all of that, and it's a really important piece of the entire developer experience. In order to get started with Git, you really don't need to know a whole lot. There are lots of great resources for learning Git, and there's a lot that you can learn. We're going to link to a lot of those resources below, but for now, we're just going to show you the basics of Git and SAS. So let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> Here I am in a very plain looking window that's called git bash. It's my command line interface to git. The command line is a really easy way that a lot of people like to work with git. However, if the command line intimidates you, you absolutely do not need to use it. There's lots of point and click interfaces that help you with managing git and some of those are in SAS and we'll see those later. Here I am in my shell in the current directory for the project I'm working in. Let's take a look at the at the contents of the project. Just doing a, an ls on the directory, I can see I've got some SAS files, I've got some other files in here, some you might recognize as files I would use to run SAS things in batch. I also have a couple of other files that are specific to getting my project ready to share in Git. Let's switch to a different interface, VS Code, to have a better look at these files. Here I am in VS Code. I really enjoy VS Code as a way to look at large collections of source files. Here I can see the files that I have in this current project. Um, I've got my SAS files. I also have a couple of files that are specific to getting my project ready to share in Git. One of them is called readme.md. Pretty standard in Git projects. MD stands for Markdown. That's a simple coding language that allows you to create and format documentation. Documentation, you say? Yes, it's important for any project, especially those that where you're collaborating with others, even if that collaboration is with perhaps your future self, documentation is always a great idea. Markdown lets you document your project and add some formatting, simple things like links and other assets. And you can see here a preview of what this is gonna look like once I share it. It's pretty basic stuff, but it's a, it's, it's a great idea to add some kind of documentation to your project. Another thing that I've added, this git ignore file. The git ignore file, it, that's a special indicator for git to say, there are some files I do not want to track in git source control. In my case, I don't wanna track my log files because those are just outputs when I run my code, as well as the output data files. I'm not storing those in git. Although you could, you might have a, a project use case where you want to store those kinds of things in Git. In my case, I don't want to. The next thing I want to show you, how I've created an empty shell already in my GitLab environment. At my organization, we use GitLab for our collaborative source control. You might use GitHub Enterprise. Maybe you're sharing code with other people on the internet and you're using GitHub or using a service like Bitbucket. They all work pretty much the same way. In this case, I've made this project called Git with SAS. It's an empty project. And the cool thing about this, it tells you exactly which commands you need to do in order to get your project initialized and shared out into this repository. In my case, because I already have an existing project, I'm going to be following this path of push an existing folder. These are the commands I'm going to run. The first command I'm going to run is Git git init. So git init or initialize will initialize my project for me and actually make it a project that can be tracked under git. Simple as that. All it did is add a little artifact into this folder that will tell git aware tools that this project is being tracked. The next thing I need to do is I need to add all of the files that I want to be added to git into the project so that they are also tracked. I can see right now if I just type the command git status 
it shows me the files that are detected locally, but they're listed as untracked, meaning they're not yet actually added into any of the Git operations. So to add them, I can just simply do git add and dot, which will just add all the untracked files. All the untracked files are now added in here. So if I do git status again, you see now they're in green and they are marked as ready to be committed. Now these files are tracked, but they are not yet committed into my Git repository. So the next thing I could do is commit. And when we commit, we need to add a message. So I'm just gonna add git initial commit for my git to SAS. And now they are committed. If I do git status again, you'll see on my current branch in git, there's nothing left to do. Everything is up to date. All my tracked files are committed. So far, everything I've done is happening only local in my folder. Nothing has been shared out to any external repository where anybody can collaborate with me. So the next thing I need to do is actually associate this local project with that remote repository that I set up. And so I'm gonna go back to my list of commands here and I'm going to grab the command that will allow me to add this repository I set up as what's called the remote origin, which is basically is the remote project that I want to sync it up with. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and run this command there. I've done it. The next command I'm gonna run is actually the git push. Everything is committed. It's up to date. I've associated my remote repository with this local folder. Next thing I'm going to do is actually push it out so that it is in my remote repository. I'm going to do that with the git push command and it is done. And if I move back over to my GitLab over here and refresh, you'll see that now all of my code is up here in GitLab and other people can now collaborate with me or use this code as it is. So we've just taken our SAS project, made it Git aware and pushed it into, in my case, my corporate Git repository, ready to collaborate with others. Next, it's time to look at how we're going to use this in SAS. Here I am in SAS Enterprise Guide. To get started, to add a repository into Enterprise Guide as a managed Git repository, click on the Git repositories icon down here and I'm gonna click add. There's two functions up here, clone and add. Add is used when I already have a local folder that is being tracked with Git and I just want to make Enterprise Guide aware of it. Clone is used when I don't have that project yet on my local machine where Enterprise Guide is and I want to go out to a remote repository on GitLab or on GitHub and I want to clone it back to an empty directory on my local machine. In my case, I already have the project locally. So I'm just going to add it so that Enterprise Guide is aware of it. So I'm going to click on my GitLab profile and I'm going to select this folder, my projects Git with SAS, and I'm going to just tell Enterprise Guide, add this as something that is tracked under Git. And now you can see here, I have this Git with SAS project. It's showing me a Git interface that allows me to do all the Git things point and click. If I don't want to use command line, as I did earlier in this tutorial, I can use these point and click methods to do my commit and push in all of those operations. I can also show the history and you can see here the history of this particular project it just has just the one operation where I added it, my initial commit, and you can see here all of the files that are tracked underneath it and how they're managed. Now I can just open these files locally and use them as I want. Enterprise Guide isn't the only SAS tool that integrates with Git. SAS Studio does as well. You'll notice that if I'm showing here my SAS Studio in SAS VIA, the interface looks almost the same. I can clone or add repositories the same way that I can track my repositories. I can work with those files here in my file section. If I go to Git with SAS here, you can see I have all of my files here that I can open up and work with right within SAS Studio. The great thing about collaborating on Git is it's really not tied to a specific SAS tool. You can use whichever ones you'd like and switch between them. Different team members can use different tools. It's very flexible that way. And likewise, when I open up Git with SAS, I get the same interface for managing my Git stuff. So those same Git commands are available to me within SAS Studio as well. Consistent, nice, right? One of the coolest things about working with Git and SAS is that Git is integrated with the SAS programming language too, which means you can use Git functions, which are the equivalent of Git commands that we saw from the command line within your SAS program. That lets us do cool things like this, where I've got a program here that has only a few lines of code, but I'm going to use Git commands, or Git functions to pull the content of my Git controlled SAS project into my SAS session and run some of that code from scratch. I don't need to have anything set up beyond these few lines of code. And so in a brand new session, I can run this Git 
clone function within SAS to bring in the content of my GitLab repository that I just added. And then once that's pulled down into my SAS session, I know I can percent include, that is tell SAS to read and execute a SAS file within my SAS session, a SAS file that I've just pulled down from this repository. I can run that from scratch and it will create a local repository for me, but pull that repository down and run the code and show me the output all without having anything initialized. It's a fantastic way to set a batch or automated system that pulls the latest code from Git and runs it in a production environment. Let's talk a little bit about how to connect your SAS tools with Git. Your Git system of record, GitHub or GitLab, they're going to require some kind of authentication for you to be able to connect and get to the code that you're allowed to reach. There are two different mechanisms that are supported by tools that support Git, including the SAS tools. They are SSH, that is a public and private SSH key pair, or HTTPS, which uses basically a username and password mechanism. And the different SAS tools support different mechanisms to do that. SAS Studio can support SSH or HTTPS. SAS Enterprise Guide can support only HTTPS. And the SAS Git functions within the SAS programming language can also support both mechanisms, SSH and HTTPS. You can use whichever ones work best for you. I will tell you that a lot of the services that support HTTPS as a mechanism. Frown on using your real password as part of the username and password combination. And instead, they support a mechanism called personal access token, which you can set up within the tool, whether that be GitLab or GitHub or Bitbucket, they all support it. The personal access token is a cool way to create a token that you can use just like a password within these mechanisms. You can also scope that token so that it can only do certain kinds of operations and you can revoke it at any time. So that adds another layer of security, really important when you're working with sensitive information that you might have in your SAS code. More documentation about a how to set up these connections in the links below, how to set up a personal access token, how to set up an SSH H key for use with SAS. All of that is documented pretty well and we will link to it in the description. I hope you've learned something about using Git and SAS and that you're excited to start using it. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you like this video, hey, give it a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when there's new tutorials like this. We'll see you next time. Should I subscribe to this channel? Yeah. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> totally worth it.